In this video, we are going to explore animation in Krita. We will see the functionality available at our disposal. And this is something we want to do before we can focus on animation, simply so that we get to learn the functionality, get comfortable with the program part, so we can then focus on designing good animation. Krita is optimized for traditional animation. This means that you won't be able to do that puppet style effect with a system of bones, a rig like you would do in 3D, or in specialized programs like Spine, Dragon Bones, Blender, whatever. To access the animation features, there's a handy little animation workspace that has been designed for us. This one comes with the layer stack, the animation docker, onion skins docker, and timeline docker, which are the three dockers that relate to animation. And then we have as large as possible of an animation space to sketch and play with. Let us start with the animation docker, the simplest of all. It controls the playback of your animation. You have one large field which showcases the current frame you are looking at in the animation. Then you can set the start and end frame for looping the playback of the animation. Here, the animation starts at frame 0 and ends at frame 6. So whenever I press play, Krita will loop between those two keyframes. And you can see that as I've produced a walk cycle, it will loop over that animation. Then you have buttons that allow you to move to the previous and next keyframe, to the previous and next frame, and you have the play pause button. In the bottom right corner of the docker, you can set the frame rate, which dictates how many frames, how many pictures Krita will play back per second. And then the playback speed will multiply that frame rate. I've set it to 8 because that's the frame rate of that animation. Then I can set the playback speed to 2 for the walk cycle to play back twice as fast. Or I can set it to 0.5 if I wanted to play back two times slower. Last but not least, you have three buttons to create new keyframes, to insert keyframes or to delete them. These are not too interesting because we can do all of that from the timeline directly and we will learn to do it that way. And then you have two buttons that are checked by default that are two options. The one on the right is drop frames. If you have a complex document and Krita cannot play back all the frames in real time, like it doesn't have enough processing power, it will drop frames to maintain your frame rate. So it will still play the animation at a constant rate at the same speed, but it will skip keyframes at times. If you have it off, Krita will play all the frames, even if it plays at a slower rate than the one you have set in there. In general, you want to keep this on. And the next button is the auto key function. If you have this one on, and I recommend that you keep it on, as soon as you have at least one frame in one of your animation layer, whenever you start drawing on a new frame, Krita will insert a keyframe for you. Also, if you press the delete key to erase the content of the layer, Krita will insert a keyframe. So that one as well, you often want to keep it on. Otherwise, you will have to manually create and remove keyframes every time. And the last button toggles the onion skins docker on and off in the interface. Let's now look at the animation timeline, which I expanded so we have a little more room to play with it. It is split into three parts. First of all, on the left, you have the animation layers that you are currently working on. At the top, you have the scrub bar, which also gives you access to a special menu that's quite handy to insert keyframes or to clear columns. And last but not least, you have the timeline itself, where you can see the animation keyframes and the empty animation frames that you will be able to move, copy or shift forward, which we're going to see in a second. First of all, let's talk about navigation in this area. If you press the space bar, you keep it down, 
and right click and drag, you will be able to zoom in and out in the timeline. And then if you press space bar and click, you will be able to pan in this area. As we have few keyframes in this animation, this is quite useful. We can zoom on it and we can more easily select them. You have the scrub bar at the top. It allows you to scrub, that is to say, to move between frames and to preview your animation in that way. If you click and drag on frames, however, in the timeline itself, it won't scrub, it will tend to grab and move them around. That's why you want to use the scrub bar whenever you want to preview the animation frames. I also have a few custom shortcuts, like Alt, Right and Left, which allows me to move between frames. Alt, Right moves one frame to the right, and Alt, Left moves one frame to the left. Then I have Control, Left and Right, which allows me to move to the next keyframe. And at the same time, you can see that it selects frames. If I keep the control key down, I'm able to select keyframes at the same time as I'm moving through them, which allows me to then duplicate them, for instance. And if you press left and right, after you have selected a frame, you will be able to navigate the frames quite simply. But if you are working in the layers docker, left and right will instead navigate through the layers hierarchy. That's why I also have Alt, Right and Left to navigate directly in the Layers Docker. You have a number of operations available from the timeline. First, you can click and shift click to select a range of keyframes. You can click and control click to select multiple individual keyframes. And control click again on a frame to toggle it selected. When you have keyframes selected, you can then click and drag to move them in the timeline. You can also Alt and click and drag on a frame to move every keyframe after it forward in the timeline. It allows you to shift everything forward. You can also Control, click and drag to duplicate keyframes. You can see it didn't remove them. It added a copy of the five keyframes I had selected further down the timeline. There is one keyframe that always has that little orange dot on it. This is the last keyframe you selected, and it is known as the active keyframe. One thing that's important, whenever you have multiple layers active at the same time in the timeline, you will see that there's a layer that's highlighted with blue and that has this orange dot. This is the active layer. This is the one you are working on if you start drawing. Here, my drawing will only affect the sketch layer in the layer's hierarchy. It won't affect the Reaper itself. I can delete that layer. I will effectively remove the animation, and it doesn't affect the walk cycle of my Reaper. Next up, you can manipulate keyframes also in the scrub bar by right-clicking. You can right-click and insert cells left and right, or clear columns and remove them. If you clear them, it will just delete the keyframes in all of the layers in the stack. But if you remove the columns, it will delete the content of this column and it will shift all the remaining keyframes to the left. Now, if you select multiple keyframes, you can insert and remove multiple columns at a time. If I select four frames, I'm able to insert four frames left or right of the selection. Then we have the layer stack itself. I've mentioned how when you select a layer, it becomes active and you are able to work on it. You can start drawing and it will affect the keyframe that's currently active. You can force layers to stay in the animation timeline all the time by right clicking on them and checking the show in timeline option. If I'm toggling it on, on the sketch layer, you will see that whenever I select another layer, both layers that have show in timeline on will stay in there. Thus, if you have multiple layers you will always animate on, you can keep them active at all time. When you click on a frame, you will see that it doesn't change the active layer. You have to click on the layer here or in the layers hierarchy to set it active. 
can also use the page up and page down keyboard shortcuts to navigate the layers and set them active as well. You have access to a number of options from here, the ability to toggle the visibility of the layer on and off, to lock it, change the alpha inheritance and the alpha lock, just like in the layers docker. And you have a little bulb that toggles onion skins on and off, which we'll talk about in a moment. We have one last menu that we can use in this area of the timeline docker. If you right click on a layer, you can add a new layer, a new animation layer, can add an existing layer from your layers docker. I'll add the group and this will set the show in timeline on so that the layer is here at all time. You can't animate on a group, but you can that way toggle the visibility of the group directly from the timelines docker. And on top of that, you can remove an animation layer, which will delete the layer quite simply. You can also access that menu from the icon in the top left corner of the docker. And you have one last icon to zoom in and out on the timeline instead of using space and right click. And that's it for the use of the timeline.